Father, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and mercy upon our lives. We thank you, Lord, because you are a great and wonderful God. The time has come, Lord, for you to speak to us. We prepare our hearts to receive from you. Speak from your throne of grace. Touch our lives. Make our lives better. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to the midweek service for today. The title of our message, in line with our anchor for the month, is Good and Bad Fruits. Good and Bad Fruits. From the beginning of the month, we'll be looking at fruitfulness. And fruitfulness is the state of being extremely productive. When you are fruitful, you are productive. When you are fruitful, you bear fruit. When you are fruitful, there is result. And it is God's desire that his children are fruitful and produce good fruits. Because fruits can be good, they can be bad. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 18, Matthew chapter 7, verse 18, it says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits. So it's very straightforward. A good tree will bring forth good fruits. And a corrupt tree will bring forth evil fruits. So it's there is no discussion. There is no confusion about thing. Likewise, in Luke chapter 6, verse 43, it says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So it's straightforward. There is good fruit, there is bad fruit. A good tree will bring forth a good fruit. A corrupt tree or a bad tree will bring forth bad fruit. Now, whether a human being we produce good or bad fruit, we depend on his or her spiritual state. Take note of that. That's why we have always emphasized here that human being is not just body. There is a spirit and there is a soul. So whether you bring out bad fruit or good fruit, we depend on your spiritual state. And in terms of spiritual state, there are three categories. There are unbelievers. People who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. There is nothing about the Holy Spirit about them. They are unbelievers. You know, they bring forth bad fruits. Then there are carnal Christians who are a majority in today's world. At one point in time, they have accepted Jesus Christ publicly. You know, they profess to be born again. They claim to be Christians. But their conduct 
is guided by the flesh and not the spirit. So, both those who are unbelievers or those who are carnal, they are in the flesh and they will produce bad fruit. But the third categories are true believers. True believers who are born again, who are spirit-filled, who are directed by the spirit. They bring forth good fruit. That's why Romans chapter 5 Chapter 7, verse 5. Romans chapter 7, verse 5 says, For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. We, have in this, we are still in the Easter season. Everyone has seen and falling short of the glory of God. And what every human being deserves is death. Because when you are in the realm of flesh, what you deserve, the kind of fruit you bear, is the fruit for death. But when you give your life to Jesus, you pass from death to life. But when you are still in flesh, there are things that you produce which are aptly captured in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. He said, the arts of the flesh are obvious. Hello? I don't know whether you saw that. He said the arts are what? Obvious. That is why... I'm always worried when I see people manifest out of the flesh and they behave that they are spiritual. You know, people who manifest out of the flesh, they've come to the church and they want to prophesy. The Bible says the acts of the flesh are what? Obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, feats of rage. You know that one is very common today. Feats of rage. You know, there are some films, they call it road rage. Road rage. People who go into feats of rage, anger, and they will carry the vehicle. Eh? Because the fellow uh, driver, as I know them, they will face it head on. Not minding whether they die in the process. Feats of rage, they are acts of the flesh. Selfish ambition. Ambition is good, but selfish one. You know, and if you are in a place where you relate with people, you will see how human beings are. You know, somebody will come to you, say, look, uh, uh, I want to come and collect a letter in your office. I say, oh, I'm in Delta, I'm coming tomorrow. Say, ah, but it's today, I want to collect it. What will I do now? <laughs> you know? I've discovered that when people want something, they don't want to hear any excuse from you. Whether it, is it convenient, whether it's possible or not. Selfish ambition. When you are considering, you don't consider other people. You only consider yourself. Dissensions. People who are always, everywhere you go is quarrel. You know, and I've always said it, that look, let's be clear. We are not going to bring angels from heaven to live with. 
you will still live with people with flesh and blood. So you can't tell me that you are very holy. But everywhere you go, you are quarreling with uh, everybody. The Bible call it dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies. You know, orgies today, people do orgies and record it. In those days, when people do orgies, they hide it. But today, they record it and put it. You know, a South African singer recently was singing and he was allowing fans to put her in her private parts on stage. Because, you know, if he didn't do that, we won't hear about it. We won't hear that he went to any way to sing. So what he sang is not the news. The news is what... Uh, Tibo did to her. So, orgies and the like. But the Bible says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who do these things, they will not. The Bible is categorical. You know, at times when you see people do things and you say, they say, why are you judging? Do not judge. Are you God? But the Bible says the acts of the flesh are what? Obvious. They are obvious. They are obvious. But that is the opposite side. The opposite side, that is the bad one. But the good side is when you give your life to Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, the Bible declares you as righteous. And because you are righteous, you will produce good fruits. I tell somebody who say amen. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, the Bible says the fruit of of the righteous is a tree of life. Remember the bad fruit is a tree of what? Death. But the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And the one who is wise saves lives. And then when you are righteous, you bring the fruit of the spirit, which is clear from Galatians chapter 5, verse 2 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, against such things, there is what? No law. No law. No law. I want us to look at these uh, nine things. And if you look at the verse, you know at times we make the mistake. We say they are the fruits of the Spirit. It's not fruits. It's one. Fruit of the Spirit with nine dimensions. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the fruit, and you manifest all of them. I, I want us to look at it very well. Because this is a challenge to many Christians. And say, look, you know, I know I'm Holy Ghost feed, but my problem is patience. You know, my own is anger. Anger is one, not one of the, the dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. Or you cannot control yourself, fit of rage. I'm sure you know some people that if they are getting annoyed, people will start begging them. They never start to... Eh? <laughs> but when people see, say, the person one verse, they, they go just begin beg them because they know what they will uh, do. That's not fruit of the Spirit. That's not fruit of the Spirit. Amen? And that is where the power of choice comes in. When you give your life to Jesus, you make a commitment to live like and to please Jesus. You can't give your life to Jesus, accept Jesus as your Lord and Master, 
and not do like Jesus. You can't give your life to Jesus and accept him as the Lord of your life. And you will not live your life to please Jesus. So, if you make a commitment to live like and please Jesus, the result is behavioral choice that looks like his by the power of the Holy Spirit. His behavioral choice. You choose what you do. And you choose what you don't do by the power of the Holy Spirit. Once you don't have that choice, in fact, I always say that it's doubtful whether you really have a true conversion experience. Because the first people that were called Christians was because they were behaving like Jesus. And that is why true followers of Jesus will be recognized by their fruits. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 20, the Bible says, By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from tistos? Every tree we produce a specific type of fruit. So if you are from the tree of the Lord, if you are from the tree of Jesus Christ, you will produce good fruit and not bad fruit. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So the challenge to you this evening is that can people recognize you by your fruit? What kind of fruit do you bring? What kind of food are you producing? Is it good or bad food? What choice have you made? Have you made a choice to produce good fruit or have you made a choice to produce bad fruit? Are you showing fruit of the Spirit? So, my dear brothers and sisters, God desires that his children produce good fruits. A human being can produce good or bad fruit depending on his or her spiritual state. If you act in flesh, you will produce bad fruit. But if you give your life to Jesus, you will make the choice enabled by the Holy Spirit to produce good fruit. My prayer today this month and always, is that God will help you to produce good fruits in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, my God. Is your name in all Yet, how excellent is your name. It is our fruit that differentiates us from the unbelievers and the believers. This evening we are going to lift up our voice and say, Father, cause me to be productive. Help me, Lord, to be fruitful is to be productive. First of all, declare in the name of Jesus, everything around you shall be productive whether physical or spiritual, in the name of Jesus. I say, Lord, I declare today everything around me shall be productive, it shall be fruitful. Lift up your voice and declare. That is the declaration for the month. It's a month of fruitfulness. Everything that is not working shall begin to work. Declare it upon your life. Everything around you shall be productive in the name of Jesus. 
But God will say, Father, help me to be spiritually sound and rooted in God. The fruit we produce is depending upon the state of our spiritual life. If our spiritual life is carnal, we produce a carnal-minded fruit. We produce in the fleshly fruit. Or if we are spiritual, we produce a spiritual fruit. Ask the Lord and say, Father, help me to be sound spiritually and to be rooted in God. Begin to declare, I refuse to be carnal-minded. Every spirit of carnality, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of flesh. One of the things that is traveling the church today is that the flesh is overcoming the spirit. A lot of many are falling astray. But declare and say, Lord, I ask for God, I refuse it in the name of Jesus. Many are falling at the west side, but we are praying for the grace to stand. Reject the spirit of carnality, the spirit of carnal minded in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I refuse, I, re I reject every fleshly desire. The desire of sexual desire, social immorality, impurity, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discourse, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions. In the name of Jesus, begin to come against them. They are not the spirit of God. The spirit of drunkenness, the spirit of urges. Begin to say, Father, I take authority over there. Let my flesh be subject to the spirit. Let the spirit of God control your flesh, your soul, and your spirit. In the name of Jesus, begin to say, Father, help me to produce the fruit of the spirit. The spirit of God, the spirit of law, the spirit of peace, the spirit of joy, the spirit of forbearance, the spirit of kindness, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of faithfulness, the spirit of gentleness and self-control, ability to have self-control, ability to forgive, ability to forbear, that's forgiveness, the ability of the grace of kindness and goodness. The grace of gentleness in the name of Jesus begin to declare every fleshly desire you are struggling with today by this word that you have heard for you to produce a good fruit. Your behaviors must be subject to the Holy Spirit. Every heritage behaviors that you say, This is how I am. Oh Lord, ask the power of God, the Spirit of God to break there. I say, Lord, I reject inherited behaviors and fleshly desires that is not of God. In the name of Jesus, I reject it. Begin to subject your behaviors under the control of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, help me to behave like you. When men see you, when people see you, they'll see the light of God in you. When people talk about you, they'll talk about the light of God. Say, Lord, I shall be a light. I will be a light to the world. In the name of Jesus. Help me to produce good fruit in the name of Jesus. Begin to ask God. God, wherever you are.